Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, I briefly want to talk about dynamic milling and how it differs from the approach that we had in earlier videos where we're doing more contour milling. And dynamic milling, and whenever you see the word dynamic inside of Mastercam, it's truly approaching milling from a standpoint of how can we do it most efficiently by increasing tool life. And it's going to create uh, automatically generated, uh, generated geometry um, that is going to be best for whatever tool that you're using. So when we're talking about contour milling, we had done this, and I, I, I come from this approach because I want people to understand when they're G-coding, it's a lot easier to go from like left to right when you're staying on the same Y-axis or X-axis, um, or top to bottom. Uh, so if you're looking here on the contour mill, and I turn on my tool path here, we're just doing a straight square or rectangle around the part. Same thing with the island here uh, for the other operation. We're just doing this basic island, and I could G-code this out by hand with Geo1, Geo2, Geo3, uh, so on and so forth. So these are why I approach, um, or those reasons are why I approach these milling operations first and, and trying, to get, trying to get people to understand contour milling before we start to move into this dynamic milling approach. So I'm going to look at the time it takes to cut both of these two operations. I'm going to select contour two and then contour three. So that's just going to be that offset cut as well as the uh, island contour. So and then I'll do a verify and I'm going to look at the time it takes. So both of these operations together is going to be 5 minutes and 13 seconds, 14 seconds call it. And it's just these straight cuts. They're just coming across, you know, just going X and Y. And then we have some X, Y plus, you know, some radii in here. So that's fine and good. Uh, it's actually going to probably create a nice toolpath um, layer at the bottom. So like when the part is actually cut, it'll look a little bit nicer, but we might want to just save that for our finishing pass. Uh, if we're doing these roughing passes, it might be easier just to do the dynamic milling first and then try to uh, increase the life of the tool. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the toolpath on these two options here, and I'm going to create a new toolpath for the dynamic milling down here at the bottom. And if we hit the uh, drop down of the 2D mill, uh, we can get this dynamic mill here. And the, this is really convenient because uh, instead of just like choosing, you know, wireframe or um, solid geometry, it's just all baked into this. So for example, my chain geometry, I'm not going to choose automatic regions. I usually skip that, but my machining regions, I'm just going to select the entire face here. So that entire face is what I'm going to be machining. And I'm going to hit the green check mark. And I'm going to choose, so if I'm inside, so if I'm doing like a pocket, I would choose to stay inside, um, but I'm going to choose from outside so that I'm going to approach this part or approach this geometry and I'm going to mill it from the outside here. And then I'm going to go to uh, avoidance regions. So I'm going to select avoidance regions and then now I'm going to select this entire uh, loop here. I don't want to select this face because then uh, I would also include the holes in the slot. I want it to be the entire surface that is the island itself. And I'll hit the green check mark and then I'll green check mark. So all I did was machining regions was the flat of that shoulder, and then the avoiding, uh, avoidance region was the entire island. And then now I'll just kind of treat this just like any normal toolpath, and I'll select a 5 8 end mill, and I'll do 5 8 I'll do rough dynamic, and then I'll go to cut parameters. Um, we're gonna choose as, uh, you know, a standard climbing, uh, sorry, standard cutting method of climb milling, and we'll just leave our cut compensation on. Um, if we had uh, multiple different uh, depths that we had to uh, set up, we would also then, you know, make sure that the tool is kept down. Uh, but I'm going to leave the depth, you know, at zero, or I'm just going to do uh, one full cut here. And the stock leave on walls, I'll just treat this again like five thousandths here. So... Corner treatment, not going to deal with that. Depth cut, not going to deal with that. Um, entry motion, we'll let it do its uh, its magic here with its helix operation. Um, we can change this in varying degrees, but I'm just showing you a basic overview of what this will do. And then I'll turn on my clearance. I'll do one, and then I'll change absolute, absolute, absolute. My depth cut, it's fine. It's just doing to, oh, let's change that to right here. And then top of stock. 
we will then select the top face here. Okay, so now you'll notice that this geometry is a little bit different. Uh, I have a lot of more squiggly lines, um, and what this is doing is it's actually just leading it in closer and closer to the center of the cut, so it's taking off a lot of that cutting pressure or those cutting forces on the tool when we're just going, you know, straight um, edges when we're doing that rectangle offset and then going in and doing the, uh, the contour for the island. So this is a little bit different. I'm going to then do a verify on this and just look at what the time it takes to cut. So the other one was a little bit shorter. So it was five minutes and 13 seconds or 14 seconds. This one's five minutes and 46 seconds, but it's all one operation now. And I'm going to slow this down and I'm going to show you what this looks like as it cuts around the part. So I just want to kind of mention here, you can see this slightly. So I'm basically going from zero and then it's starting to taper or create like an angle or like a ramp. And it's taking off a lot of that cutting pressure from the side there. So that's going to uh, prolong the life of the tool and it's going to allow you to uh, maintain that thick to thin um, chip load that we want to see. So I'll just pause it right there and that's kind of an odd shape. <laughs> We're not really going to be able to write that by hand. Um, that's not necessarily a standard, um, you know, handwritten G code there. Uh, so that's why the dynamic mill is setting it up in such a way that it's trying to find the most optimal way to cut by increasing the tool life and taking off those cutting um, pressures and forces. I mean, look at that. <laughs> that looks ugly, right? Uh, I wouldn't leave that as my final pass. I would obviously come back in and then do like a contour cut um, and cut everything away at once. But it's just something to kind of point out here that you can approach this uh, with one tool path and make it pretty easy on yourself and not have to do all those offsets. Um, nine times out of 10, I would most likely use this uh, dynamic milling to rough something out and then I would come back and then you know clean it up with whatever tool path, whether it be a pocket, uh, contour, or slot or something like that. Uh, so if you were doing internal uh, geometry, there's also a pocket, um, dynamic milling, and then you can also do like from inside as well, because uh, this one is from an outside perspective. So uh, don't use this on your examples, um, just something to show you that it exists, uh, but I don't know if this will make as much sense if you try to approach this first, because we come from a perspective or we come from a background of understanding G-code first, and that's why I show you those contour cuts um, with that 98431 example.